people we were just chatting off air, and uh, I was asking you about your court, your court, the old your court that was listed under Set Sully Tucker, and this is actually. A, a, re, a rebirth of the same company, isn't it? Yoko was listed on the Jay-Z since 1945 and money controlled by the Tucker family and they sold out to a private equity firm which then used that as a vehicle to acquire Global Force products which made them as a small company immediately one of the leading players in the domain industry. So yes, the company had to go through some very interesting changes the last two years. And of course, uh, you do claim to be the biggest in the industry yes. at this stage in South Africa and of course the, the only real listed one, aren't you? Yes, we're the only listed company. Uh, we are an integrated forest products company. We have land holdings, we have plantations, processing plants, and a national network of warehouses, which we service the markets. Well, we're going to chat just about how the group is performing shortly. But first of all, I mean, how tied is the lumber markets to the building and construction industry? I mean, we know that's been under pressure for, for the last period. What sort of demand for building products, which perhaps include lumber? Lumber is a small portion of the building industry, uh, between 7 to 11 percent our product. If you bring other timber products in, it goes about to 15 to 18 percent. It's, it's, it is a very dynamic industry. It's a huge driver of the economy. Uh, our product plays a huge role in it itself. Um, I think the, the fundamentals of the industry is, is positive looking for going forward. We have a 15 percent pickup from last year's demand. And it seems that prices are also on the increase for us. So we, uh, we are very positive and, and, and uh, upbeat about the future. What sort of, uh, what sort of pickup uh, and demand are you seeing? What products are being uh, demanded here? We uh, see it's mainly a pickup in the residential side of the business. Uh, the, we see mainly the structural side, meaning the roof truss market. There's also a pickup you know, from the uh, crating and, and pallet industry also. Uh, so uh, there seems to be good fundamental drivers going forward. It seems the furniture market also just to start to lift its nose. Uh, we have a bigger demand for industrial type of product or clear wood product. So it seems like all seems to be in the positive theory at the moment. Now, Pete, just going back a little, uh, a little bit, so, um, you came from a period of oversupply of lumber yes. in the domestic markets. I'm thinking back to the 2009 <coughs> financial year. And that put pressure on prices last year. I mean, has this evened out by this time this year? Uh, Stephen, last year the, the York Board had to sit down and had a careful uh, look at the company itself, its assets. We had to do a careful assessment of our capacities, the type of product in the market, uh, our own way of uh, servicing those markets, our cost structure. So we went through a quite comprehensive restructuring of the business. And we have aligned ourselves with what the market can pay and what the market demands, which, which effectively meant we had to close down some of our processing capacities. But that's so you, you effectively cut some of the supply to the market? Yes, we had to. We had to reduce supply in the region of 30% to the market in order to align ourselves to the, to, to the, mod, the demand at that stage. So what, what's the supply dynamics at the moment? I think what we've done, it seems like we've made the right decisions. We made it quick and fast. You know, we didn't ponder on that. The board was quite clear in, in, in what they were trying to achieve. So I think that was a key success for that uh, turn to come to back into the profit levels. So we, we have seen that from a processing point of view that we are running our plants at the optimal level. We refer to that as cost optimization and we've been successful at that now. You've gone through quite a big restructuring though because you had results out recently, I think they came out at the end of September yes. and that's for a junior end company. Revenue was down about 17% but profits were up quite sharply and that's really been just a big focus you've taken on the cost line, isn't right. it? We, we took out a huge amount of fixed cost out of the company. That's the right sizing principle but more importantly was to optimize the cost structure which means is that you have to in order to look at your asset base and look and see where you want to where, where does the product the target of the product that you want to produce and optimally put that product at the right price at the right level at the right quantities in the market and we've been successful with that now of course you closed three of your sawmills and i think retrenched about 800 workers now what happens when you see demand really picking up in the market can you lift your production again to, to meet the, that demand we we have the ability you know our, our plants doesn't run at full full capacities at this stage when demand picks up to levels uh, before the market start to turn down we have the ability to you know gear ourselves up but also you know the sadness of a right sizing is losing people and unfortunately retrenching stuff but what we have done is, uh, is that we have retrained those staff that we have retrained and currently I'm very proud to say we've re-employed some of those staff members where they make furniture, they make small cabinets assisting us through us 
They have now acquired big contracts where they supply products, small little you know, kitch kitchenettes, uh, tables, uh, things for the market, which has been very promising and very positive. So we've retrained them, and they've acquired a new skill, and we're very glad to see the success of that. Well, that that so is a good news story. I mean, the, the turnaround we're seeing at the moment, is it sustainable going into the future? We, we Will you keep those costs down where you've brought them to? I think that's the challenge. As, as a management team, the board has made the objectives quite clear for us. Um, we are we also threatened by imports as well. Uh, we, although it's a local market, you know, you always have international players looking at you. Uh, Particularly with the RAND where it is at the moment. Exactly. The RAND is a big player, especially in the flatboard side of the market. You have to be cost competitive. So we have not benchmarked ourselves locally, but also internationally. And we rate ourselves now in that last or the best 25% quartile of cost producers worldwide. Um, your balance sheet, you had a 500 million rand rights issue last, year, last November, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, How has that helped you restructure the balance sheet at this stage? That was one of the key decisions the board made, is to go back to the shareholders, to say to them, listen, we have a high gearing uh, ratio. We had to address our debt level, so we went to the shareholders with this restructuring plan, and our rights issue was oversubscribed by 1.6 times. So we were very fortunate and uh, the shareholders supported the initiative by the company and what the board proposed. So that had a huge impact on our viability and also our future sustainability going forward. You look at perhaps growing your forestry assets at this stage? The key for us, yes, we have to increase our resource footprint. You know, that is a key uh, uh, challenge for us as a management team to see where we can do this. South Africa as a country, there's no real additional areas where you can actually acquire a long-term rotation forest or plantations that we mainly use and operate with. So there's a challenge for us to see how we're going to increase that footprint. How about further into southern Africa? That is the key objective here and to see how. The, we have, it, it has its challenges from a logistics point of view, uh, from a skills and a training point of view and support and backup. But these are the challenges, you know, this is, this is what makes companies like us successful or not. You said you're seeing an improvement in the, <coughs> the retail housing market at, at this stage. Of course, lots of building and construction companies yes. still feeling it pretty tough going. What do you think is going to sustain that and perhaps build momentum in the housing sector? Stephen, the biggest driver for us is the interest rate. And hopefully, maybe there's some, still some good news coming over the next week or two. But that's the key driver. And then the second one is confidence. If, if, if uh, homeowners or consumers have the confidence, again, to invest in property, uh, we think that will, that will really sustain the growth in the industry. And the third one is, the, of course, government's initiative in order for the low-cost housing sector. But that government is challenging their ability to deliver on those promises. But we would get for those, all three of those areas, to see how that will impact our business. And we have the ability or the flexibility to adjust whichever way the demand will come from.